Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. In today's video, we're back in Gran Turismo 7, and I'm going to take you through a series of races I did over a couple of days uh, in a daily race B, working my driver rating up from a driver rating of D to a driver rating of B. It was a long road, ups and downs, tragedy, chaos, anger. So I'm going to bring you along for the ride. Hopefully you find it enjoyable. Hopefully you learn some stuff along the way. This first video actually is going to show me starting at ranking C and actually dropping down to ranking D. And then you'll see the rest of the journey in a follow-up video. The track here is Dragon Trail Gardens Reverse, so all of these are going to be on this track. So this is also, over, like I said, over the course of a couple of days where I'm also learning and getting better at the track, um, getting more experience on there. So my qualifying time uh, right now is in the 142s, I believe, and... So it's not good enough for a high position, and, and as we kind of go through this, you'll see that one of the keys to having success, generally speaking, in an online races, other than, you know, having, <laughs> being fast, is qualifying well enough that you're towards the front of the pack, because most of the chaos that happens in online races happens mid-pack, back of the pack. But anyway, let's jump into this first race, let's go on this adventure together, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, so... Race 1, we're starting P13, my current qualifying time a 142.39. I qualified better than one person who actually qualified, two people didn't set a qualifying time at all. So we'll see what we're going to do in this race. Now, I will be cutting a lot of these races down just so that we get the key bits. I'm not going to make you guys watch 15 full races, or I don't even know how many there are. Um... But we're going to go over the key points, and starting out, I'll give you some kind of generalized tips for that I've picked up racing online, if you're new to it. If you guys are experienced online races, hopefully you'll enjoy watching me go through some of the learning process and the chaos, but... Um, one thing to really keep in mind in online races is to be cautious in the first turn. If you're at the front of the pack, sitting on pole, first, second, something like that, you can usually pretty reliably get a decent line out there as long as you don't get rammed from behind, but when you're in a big you know, mid-pack or the rear pack, you really need to be overly cautious going to that first turn. If you're really pushing and jockeying for position, there's a much higher chance that you'll pick up some kind of penalty. As you can see, this guy, a couple cars ahead, has picked up a two-second penalty already, um, probably for late braking and slamming into somebody. But trust from experience <laughs> that you don't want to be jockeying to try and gain that one or two positions in the first turn. It'll probably end up costing you more often than it benefits you, but... Uh, I'm probably being a little overly conservative, because again, when I was racing this, I'm still relatively new to online racing uh, in Gran Turismo, and there is a lot of precision for it, and it's funny th how much uh, there's nerves that are involved, because you really are trying to be precise. As I turn in towards the apex there, didn't see my radar, that guy was there, that was my fault for that contact, but I get a lot of nerves uh, still racing, because I haven't quite settled into having the experience of online racing, so... Um, dealing with other cars around me and keeping on the racing line and not over accelerating and causing a car to spin I still get very nervous versus like a game like Call of Duty where I used to get that way but now I've been playing so long you just kind of calm and collected even in intense situations so that that comes with experience so that'll be part of uh, part of the process here as well but trying to keep clean lines trying to be a clean racer in general that in my opinion, that ought to be what you uh, aim for as someone goes off here, um, is you want to aim for becoming a clean racer instead of trying to just push for every last position. In the long run, believe me, it will do you better and people will enjoy racing against you more, especially in things like Gran Turismo 7, despite all the people racing it, it does become a relatively small community. You will see some of the same drivers from race to race, so it's good to not have a reputation for being an a-hole, uh, because people will, you know, pay you back, um, as we're seeing some more collisions and stuff here. Uh, another thing that I will say, kind of generally speaking, is stick with the races, right? Don't get frustrated if you get rammed or put off or lose a couple of positions. Um, finish out the race, because a lot of times other drivers will make mistakes. And really, as far as getting your driver ranking up, is if you finish in essentially the top half, the top eight positions on the track, Generally speaking, your driver rating is going to go up. Um, and so just, you know, stick with it. And if nothing else, more time on track, more laps is going to make you better in the long run, more experience behind the wheel. So 
I'm up to P9 here, coming through these turns, uh, trying to basically move up. I'm catching up to P7 and 8, which, uh, and P8 here has a little bit of a slip. And again, you're just trying to capitalize on these mistakes, so I'm just trying to keep a clean line, uh, not take too many risks, and take as many opportunities as I can to gain positions as they're available. Uh, but as you'll see coming up, especially in some of these lower lobbies, driver skill can often be an issue. And actually what you'll see here is a, a bit of an accordion effect as I get punted and spun, uh, almost spun all the way out in that corner. But if we jump back and look at what actually happened, you'll see that the driver that just passed me that has that three second penalty was actually the cause of that accident as opposed to the Lamborghini who actually hit me. So let's go take a look at that. So if we look at the radar down here, you'll see that the car two cars back actually slams into the Lamborghini, forcing him into me. Uh, so he gets both of those positions, but does incur a three second penalty in the process. So at least the penalty system kind of worked there. But yeah, these are the things that are going to happen mid-pack, backpack in, in these lobbies. So returning back to where we were in the race, um, I was about to catch up to the two positions ahead. Uh, so he starts his penalty. So I'm back to ninth, but now I am three, three and a half seconds behind the cars that I was almost up in behind, uh, potentially looking for an overtake. So now I get to spend the next uh, lap trying to catch up. Uh, so it's it's disappointing when this happens, because even though the other cars are penalized, it doesn't necessarily help you recover what you lost. So moving forward to the final lap here, as I'm finally kind of closed back up on P8 at least, trying to see how many positions uh, I can gather up here. Um, and again, generally in these, because I think most of these races are typically 16 drivers. Um, if you finish in the top half of the race, from what I've seen, generally speaking, your driver rating goes up. Um, your sportsmanship rating uh, depends on whether or not you got penalties or slammed into other cars or, or a number of those things. But uh, it appears at least that uh, your driver rating is directly linked to your finishing position, which again can be a source of uh, frustration as you're trying to work through these races because you could be in a top 10 position, you know, looking 5th, 6th, looking to finish uh, higher in the points, but uh, then you could get rammed and lose 10 positions and finish and lose on your driver rating kind of through no fault of your own. But uh, again, you see them kind of jockeying uh, for position here. So uh, 7 and 8 switch positions here. The Brazilian has had a little bit of a moment again, it's kind of deja vu of when I was catching up to him earlier. Um, now I'm just trying to make sure that I'm keeping it clean through this chicane, not ramming into the back of him. And I want to come out of this final turn and hopefully have a run on them. That's really my only overtaking opportunity is to just get a better run out of this final corner and hope I can beat them to the line. Um, and lucky for me, they are kind of jockeying for position. So P7 actually goes off into the wall here, loses a lot of momentum. I pull in behind him to get as much draft as I can, pop out, just beat him to the line. P8 enough to increase my driver rating a little bit. Um, but these are the kind of moments for online racing that actually for me are like really addictive where even though things can be frustrating, you get some setbacks, even if it's not necessarily for the win, those little battles, that last turn to try and get that position and, and gaining it by a, by a tenth uh, makes it really exciting. So first race, uh, went up five positions, finished eighth, a good result. Um, so let's jump into some of these other races uh, and see how it goes. Although. Uh, in this, you'll see that uh, the Lamborghini, uh, Brian Stack there, actually does apologize. Even though maybe he didn't even realize that he got rammed. Maybe he just thought he screwed up and slammed into me. But uh, uh, I let him know that, that whatever, it's all good. Because um, it definitely didn't seem super malicious. And again, upon review, wasn't even really his fault. But always good to see that. If you make a mistake, make amends. Building a reputation does help. So let's jump over to the next race. I have not improved my qualifying time between these races, so now I'm starting P14 in this lobby. So once again, going to have to work from the back and just see how many positions I can gain. Uh, and you'll see through these races, right, where this illustrates the value of putting in the time in the time trialing in the qualifying to try and improve your overall starting position in the race and give yourself a better chance of success. But here we go from P14. Let's see how it's going to go. So, once again, we're going to try and get a good start, a good run up to this first turn. Um, and hopefully without playing it too cautious into the first turn, going to make sure that we don't overextend. I made a lot of gains on this guy here, 
So I'm going to take the inside line here, but not push too crazy. Taking a bit of a conservative line, I probably could have pushed a little bit harder through there um, and actually done a better job to maintain that position. Um, I did end up gaining the position. The guy honestly could have pushed a little bit harder on the outside, and I could have done a better job catching up to the group in front of me. But again, these are the little things that you learn uh, over time as you get more experience racing. So settled in at P13. Let's see how these these first few turns through the chicane goes here. The guy goes off on the right there, uh, another Ferrari. Um, I was kind of shooting for uh, passing through him. I was looking to get back on my line without running into that guy when he de-ghosted. Um, so he managed to recover just enough to still kind of have that position, but managed to overtake, move up into P12 uh, without too much trouble there with a nice clean overtake even after you ghosted. You gotta watch out for these hard turns like this. This is where you can really get dive bombed, and as you see, kind of on the radar there, I very nearly got dive bombed into that. So in these lower lobbies, this kind of stuff can happen. So I wouldn't necessarily say there's a whole lot you could do to prevent that. Sometimes if you are anticipating a dive bomb, you can try to take a different line, but I'm trying to take the fastest racing line here so I can catch up with this group ahead and gain positions, but you know, that's a risk you take in these lower lobbies with just getting viciously dive bombed. Uh, luckily, uh, avoided it in that particular instance as someone else finds himself off the left side of the track. And so once again, I'm gaining another position just by driving a, a clean race and just staying on the racing line and continuing to move up and around the track, being consistent. Consistency is key. But speaking of dive bombs, as we move back at the beginning of lap two, going back into turn one, hard on the brakes, Guy comes up behind me and absolutely annihilates me. Did not stop for that corner. Uses me as a break. The Brazilian overtakes me. I lose several seconds to the cars in front of me. Uh, I don't lose technically the position to the guy who hit me. He's still behind me. Uh, although, obviously, it has cost me dearly. Ho hopefully, he probably at least got a two or three second penalty out of that. Although, you can't necessarily be sure that Gran Turismo is going to fairly hand out the penalties, but... You know, it just is what it is. I got to keep on chugging P12 now and uh, got to get back on it and hopefully make up some positions now that I've been dive bombed. Just looking in the rear view, this guy is just flying through the chicanes. He hits me again and absolutely no respect for the racing line. <laughs> That's kind of a joke. This stuff can be frustrating. Sometimes you got to laugh. Uh, sometimes you're going to scream. I'm During the race, I probably was not laughing. <laughs> but... Looking back at it now, oh, just what a, what an absolute mess these, these races can be. So uh, part of the reason why hopefully sharing this with you is helpful is give you some advice towards getting to higher ratings when you get up into the B uh, driver ratings. Um, things get a little bit cleaner. You still have some trouble mid-pack and rear-pack, but uh, yeah, the idea with getting your driving rate up is to avoid uh, a lot of these absolute mad lads. So jumping up ahead a couple of turns here as I'm catching up to the cars in front. Coming up to the triple left-hander here. We're going to see the car in front of me go wide. Another car is just completely off perpendicular to the racing line. And uh, gain a position from that and close up real close on this guy in front as I'm trying to get this inside line on him as I get a better exit on that corner. Now I'm trying to take the narrow line through this chicane. He turns in on me. Uh, this is where when you got these side-by-side -side races... Uh, through a uh, chicane or an S or any kind of turn, you need to leave room for the other car, right? If you're on the inside um, and the apex is on the inside, then just because you are slightly in front doesn't mean you get to cut into that apex if there's another car on a narrower line. This is how overtaking works. Uh, so you do have to leave room. Um, the exception being, right, if somebody's, if you're already turning into a corner and someone hasn't braked appropriately for the turn and just slams into you on the inside of that line, that is not a clean overtake, but Try to get a run on him. I, I jump out to the outside, but I swerve a little too hard. So I actually end up losing that momentum uh, and take a bad angle into this chicane. Uh, so I'm not able to close the gap. And in fact, he pulls away uh, just a little bit going into the final turn of lap three. And unfortunately, that is where it would end. So jumping ahead to the final lap. Finished P11. Not the best result. Uh, had some opportunities to gain some positions, but again, a couple of just dive bombs, bad luck from some of the other drivers in the race, and uh, P11 is the best I could come up with. So even though I improved three positions overall from where I started, it was not good enough to be in the top half of the positions. 
So I did get a clean race. I didn't get any penalties. I didn't slam into anyone, even though I got annihilated. But uh, this did cause my driver rating to drop, unfortunately. So you're still in the C rating going into the next race. So for this lobby, still haven't improved my qualifying time, but I managed to get placed P9 in this. So a little bit of a weaker lobby, or, or maybe just some of the players who are finishing higher quit or moved up <laughs> to a higher rated lobby. You, your driver rating can actually increase uh, pretty quickly uh, at these levels if you get a couple of podiums or, or even a win. Um, but this race, uh, optimistic because I'm getting to start a little bit higher in the pack at P9 instead of P13, 14. So hopefully we can pull a better result out of this race. So as we're coming down into the triple left-hander, looks like there's some contact ahead. This guy goes sideways. Luckily he goes south so we don't T-bone him. And it looks like uh, the car that uh, pushed him out is going to get a four-second penalty for that. Uh, and gain a position up to P8. Hoping I could maybe get a line or a little bit of a run on Don Julio, but decide to kind of pull it back rather than push my luck. Maybe slam into him, get back on the racing line, and see if I can uh, get some speed to gather up a couple more positions. Fast forward a little bit after the driver with the penalty serves it. I'm up into P7. I got three cars in front of me, uh, real close, and I feel like I've got better pace than them, so potential to move up to P4, hopefully, uh, within the next lap or so. Get in a drag race with this Peugeot. Uh, I honestly did this the, the previous lap too, and even though I kind of got a better run out of the corner, uh, that Peugeot just accelerates uh, faster than this Ferrari down the long straight. That's unfortunate, but they have some some rustling in here. I try not to dive bomb inside there, and I get absolutely annihilated from behind. So I gave some space to the car in front so that I wouldn't hit him coming through that chicane. The driver behind me did not return the favor, slammed into me, spun me out, and didn't even have the courtesy to stop and uh, return the position. Just went on with his race, happily taking my position, and the time it takes me to recover, uh, costing me to lose yet more positions, so dropping down to P10. So as we fast forward to the end of the race, P10 is where I would finish. And this just goes to show you how heartbreaking sometimes these races can be. The difference between me having a chance at P4, or even looking at how close P4 and P3 were together, I could have finished with a podium with my pace in this lobby, but instead I get annihilated, finish P10. So instead of my driver rating going up significantly from a podium, it's going to be going down for a P10. Another heartbreaker in the C-Class. So, managed not to gain or lose any positions in that. Driver rating dropped again, so I decided I needed to improve my qualifying time. So, jumped into a time trial here for the qualifying. Uh, my first lap out of the gate here, uh, after my previous high of a 142.39, improved slightly to a 142.2. A um, little bit of improvement, but on the next lap managed to bump it up to a 141.8. And honestly, this was just from having raced in uh, a couple of races and just being more familiar with the track, uh, jumping back in and seeing how that, how that goes. So, unfortunately, as you'll see here, this actually put me in P14 because my better qualifying time actually moved me up into a lobby with some B driver rating drivers, um, which again, not necessarily a bad thing other than the fact that, once again, I'm going to be at the back of the pack with the C rated drivers uh, dealing with some more chaos so improved my lap time managed to get a worse starting position <laughs> not the best result so as we're accelerating down to the first turn i'm going to show you another hazard that you have starting this late in the pack i'm looking for my breaking point at the beginning of the curb and this car this ferrari in front of me breaks way too early so i go into the back of him not expecting him to be breaking that early into the turn again this is stuff that happens in lower rated lobbies when people don't know the line as well 100% my fault, right? You can't just slam into somebody because he breaks too early for a turn. Um, but definitely didn't anticipate that. So immediately drop a position down into last P15. Uh, again, this guy's going too slow through this corner. I don't mean to slam into him, but if anything, I actually help him out slightly with a bump there, which is dangerous in a turn because um, I could have easily spun him out. So again, not trying to get contact, but I have better pace than these cars. 
and because of how they're driving, it's it's causing me issues with trying to overtake positions because they're taking slow lines into corners or breaking early for turns, uh, which makes it hard to to react accordingly. So, just trying to clean up my line, see if I can get a good run and take advantage of a mistake to gain some of these positions. Just another kind of frustrating start to the race. So fast forwarding just a little bit, I've moved up into P14 as this pack has really kind of been battling a little bit. Uh, get a better run here up to P13 as we're heading into the triple left hander. And this is just going to be absolute chaos. This guy goes wide, turns in, T-bones a guy, cuts inside, I get rammed, that guy's sideways. It's an absolute nightmare. The guy doesn't ghost out. Uh, slam, bam, all kinds of pileups. Uh, somehow I come out of that in P12. So, I guess... That's a net positive, although I've, you know, lost valuable time to any of the cars in front. The Alfa Romeo loses it on that turn, giving me P11. And now I'm going to see if I can catch up to P10 here and poten potentially gain one more position uh, before the end of the race. So fast forwarding a little bit into the final lap, chasing this guy down through these turns, just trying to have a clean line, see if I can get a good run, a good chance for a clean overtake again. He breaks, he takes a narrow line, breaks hard in there. I make sure not to run into him, but that does kind of rob me uh, of a bit of momentum. I probably could have taken a bit wider line through there if I'd known he was going to park it on the apex like that. Um, now I'm going to have to try and keep a clean line through this chicane. It's a good opportunity to make up some time so long as uh, I don't run into the back of him. I give him a little touch there because he breaks way too early. I try not to be too mean about it. I couldn't break any more than that. Um, and now my, again... My hope is to get a better run coming off this final turn and beat this guy to the line. So trying to modulate a little bit so I can run through the apex hard on the accelerator. So as he's lifting a little bit, trying not to go wide on that, I'm accelerating out, get a better run out, manage to take P9 right before the finish line. Again, not an ideal result, but making the best of a bad situation. So, finishing P9, five positions up from where I started, but unfortunately, not enough to increase my driver rating. My driver rating is going to drop yet again. So, once again, we're going to try to improve our best qualifying time here. Doing another lap, managed to get it down even more. Previous best, 141.8. Managed to trim it down a little bit, 141.757. The next race that puts us in... P11, uh, no Bs in this lobby, so just a lobby of C driver ratings that's just faster. Um, so, <laughs> kind of struggling as I'm making my lap better to improve my position on the grid, <laughs> but still giving it my best. So we're going to jump up as we're getting into the triple left-hander and kind of show you one, some other unfortunate things that can happen when you try to take advantage of a of an opportunity to gain positions close to this pack of cars in front of me coming through that triple left hander nice and clean not getting rammed coming into this right hander turn here a little bit battling he goes inside people are off the track so I have the opportunity to come into this narrow line but these wide cars he comes back in over the corner so I'm trying to take that position he just overcorrects back in there gets into my rear quarter panel and completely spins me around so I'm dead last, knocked into 14th, 14th position. Again, unlucky. Good pace, opportunity to gain positions. Instead, just got absolutely destroyed. Managed to pass a car who just completely loses it off the track there. Move up into P13, but really just not going to be uh, another good result for me in this race. Fast forwarding to the final lap. Picked up a couple of positions for cars that spun out. Uh, and they quit, so gonna end this one disappointingly in P11. Just disaster after disaster, bringing my driver rating down again and again. Clean race, though. <laughs> Alright, so gonna go again to try and improve my qualifying lap time yet again. Uh, current best, 141.28. But after one more lap, we're going to manage to bring it down all the way to a 140.6. So, almost starting to get into the realm of respectable lap times here. So as we jump into the next race, still C-rated. This one's finally put me up a little bit better. P6 to start this next race. 
But it didn't take too long for things to start to unravel a little bit. Coming back down uh, through these S's. This Ferrari goes wide, and so I'm looking for an overtake as he's running slow. I look to the outside, he kind of closes in, and that loss of momentum, two people get by. I lose two positions on that. So instead of gaining that position, I lose two. Luckily, this guy goes wide again, so I'm able to take the inside line here. I'm leaving him space on the outside, but I had to slow enough that another car comes inside on that position. So we're almost kind of sort of three wide here as I'm down into ninth. About to come into the chicane here, so I want to be very careful not to cause contact. I was looking again for a guy to potentially break early. He did. Uh, managed not to get any contact in him. And then just absolutely rammed and spun out from behind. At least this time, this guy waits to give that position back. But again, damage done. So essentially falling back to last, except that the guy who spun me out was at least sportsman enough to not take my position as well as my dignity. <laughs> but again, I've just... P6 to P14 on lap one. Not, not, not a good result. I managed to scratch back a couple more positions before the end of the race, but the best we're going to do in this one is P11. So, despite, again, good pace, good starting position, going to get murdered into infinity, finish P11, and lose some more driver rating. And unfortunately for me, this would actually drop me down into a D driver rating. So, even though I jumped in and improved my qualifying time yet again from a 140.6, in the next video, you're going to see me struggle with dri driving from the D class. But we're going to get all the way up to B. So be sure to come back to check that one out in the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike. And I'll see you guys in the next one.